Well, let's bring in our political panel. Elicia Menendez is senior advisor for the New Democrat Network. David Drucker is a staff writer for Roll Call. And Heidi Harris is the host of the conservative radio show, The Heidi Harris Show in Las Vegas. Let's talk about Sarah Palin. She showed up at the Iowa State Fair today, one day before the straw poll. Straw poll. So is she running for president or not? Here she is. Are you a potential candidate? Still a potential. Still, still thinking about it. Still thinking there. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, so we won't be in the state tomorrow. David, is she serious? I don't think she's running, but she's a national figure. She's a big figure in Republican circles, and so it makes sense to me that the center of the Republican universe this weekend is in Iowa for the straw poll, and I'm not surprised she's there. Alicia, is she running? I think she's running for the queen of reality TV. Listen, she has <laughs> built herself a fantastic brand. She sells books. She sells television shows. She doesn't need the headache of being president of the United States. She's doing very well as it is right now. I do think that keeping herself in the news, keeping herself relevant, is the best thing she can possibly do. Heidi, if anyone knows of the four of us, you know, is she running? No, I don't think she's running. I think that it's a little bit late for her to get the campaign together that she would have to get. And I also think there are people already in the field who have the evangelical vote. Uh, you've got Michelle Bachman, who's a pretty brunette, if you want the woman vote. I mean, Michelle Bachman's got other qualifications, too. But I think there are a lot of people like her. And, and also, Sarah Palin said a long time ago she would get in if she didn't feel like there was anybody in the race. And I think there are already people who have a lot of the attitudes that she does. So I don't see why she bother. Well, that's my point. I think she's running for power, bro. Wouldn't the fact that she remains visible, David, give her the position at the right time to really come and bargain for what she believes in and what she wants and become the power broker? She saves herself from uh, getting washed out if she didn't win. She's there win or lose. She remains a presence and she's a viable commodity politically as well as personally. She becomes the power broker. Why not well, stay visible? It makes, if Romney and Perry, everybody's got to try to bid for as long as she can keep this out there. Well, to a degree, I think you're right. On the last political cycle, she was a hit on the fundraising trail. She could raise more money and draw bigger crowds than almost any surrogate on the campaign trail for Republican candidates. And by staying relevant, but not ruining her brand by running and losing, which she very, very well might have done had she run for president, uh, she remains sort of in demand and, and somebody that people want to hear from. And so I agree with Alicia, there's, there's no reason for her not to be out there. It's good for business for her, but as you say, it also means that she is still important in Republican circles. And I bet once we get to the, the general election, um, you're gonna see her draw some crowds and raise some money for the Republican nominee. Now, I want to talk to you, uh, the panel, all of you, about religion and politics, because that's certainly an issue. But let, let me ask you, before I leave this, David, about uh, Michelle Bachman. You've been out there, and I understand, no matter how much the chatter crowd talks about her and the weird uh, kind of pictures people are seeing, as some are seeing as strange, others are seeing not strange, she's actually drawing a lot of crowds, a lot of enthusiasm, I'm hearing. That's correct. She's very engaging, very personable. She's very articulate. She's done a great job inspiring people on the stump. And she knows how to talk bread and butter Republican issues, whether it's national defense, whether it's social issues, or whether it's fiscal issues. She's not a flawless candidate, but she's doing a really good job. And she ha can appeal on many levels. I think her big, her big problem ultimately is that she doesn't have executive experience. She's never run anything. And what people are most concerned about is the economy. And that's where she might falter when faced up against Mitt Romney and now Rick Perry. We talked earlier about Rick Perry, who you just mentioned, and his using religion and politics. Politics and prayer got a lot of attention last night. Mitt Romney's religion was questioned by other candidates. I listen to what people say. What they basically say is that they are not real clear about how his Mormon religion relate to the majority of the people's uh, Protestant Christian religion in the South. And other candidates are bringing faith to the, to the trail. 
God takes our efforts, he blesses them, he multiplies that efforts, he gives us profit. Out of that profit, that's how we give. That's how we bless. We need to keep our head down, we need to keep working, we need to keep faith. Because if you are faithful, God will be faithful. He will bless what you're doing. We need to be a country that turns toward God, not a country that turns away from God. Heidi in a GOP primary, is this what you need to talk about to succeed? I don't know that you need to talk about it, but I think when it's something you believe in, and you understand this, uh, when it's something that you believe in, then everything you think is filtered through that word of God. And so you can't get away from it. Even if you don't want to talk about it openly, that's what you believe. And I think it's smart to be open about it. You know, Mitt Romney doesn't talk a lot about his religion, but it does come up. Herman Cain's right about the South. They have a different attitude about Mormonism than we do out here in Nevada. It's not a big deal to us. It's because we're right next to Utah and that kind of thing. It comes up whether you are open about it or not. It is a legitimate question. And voters have to decide whether it matters to them or not what your faith is and how that faith will affect your leadership. Alicia, I do believe in religion and I do look at everything through my religion, but I also don't believe I have the right to impose it, which means that I support people's right to do things that I may personally consider as against my religion. These are not statements these people are making. They are acting like we must legislate what they believe in as their religion. Is that the problem they're going to have in the general election? It is, and it's terrifying. And I think above all else, voters want to know that whatever you're talking about is legit, that you come from this place and that it's sincere. You look at someone like Mitt Romney, he's flipped flop so many times on the question of choice, originally coming out saying he had a family member who'd been affected by an illegal abortion. It had made him pro-choice, now saying that he does not support a woman's right to choose. That is more frightening than anything to a mainstream vote. I think people have the right to do what they want. Doesn't interfere at all with my faith, but my faith seeks converts. I do not believe you must force religion on anyone. Thank you, Elysia. Thank you, David. Thank you, Thank Heidi. You. We have to end this religion. You. Heidi, you go back to Sin City. We had a great panel tonight. <laughs> That's Ahead. Right. The right wing is worried. This video is indoctrinating children. Here we go again. Stay with us. We're going to have to.